Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager for the Gyme Diffraction Facility located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This video will cover how to use HighScore Plus to determine crystallite size and microstrain using Refeld Refinement. I have a number of other videos that show and explain how to use HighScore Plus for different purposes, such as phase identification and phase quantification, and the links for these videos can be found in the description below. If you are unfamiliar with HighScore Plus, it may be a good idea to stop this video, watch the phase identification video first, and then return to this one. For those of you still watching, we will now look into how to determine crystallite size and microstrain. These properties are determined by the breadth of your peaks. As such, we need to first determine the broadening caused by the measurement optics before analyzing data from your sample of interest. The most common method of determining instrumental broadening is through the use of NIST standard samples, such as lanthanum hexaboride or silicon. These samples must be measured using the same exact optics as those used for your sample. I have already collected a diffraction pattern using the NIST 640E silicon standard, so the first step is to load the pattern. To do this, we will start by going to File, Open. These first two are the data files for the samples I want to analyze. Here we have the silicon standard, so we will start with the silicon standard. Here we have a very nice looking diffraction pattern. And because it's so nice, and because we know that there's just silicon in it, I will skip the first two steps that I covered in the phase identification video, namely uh, background determination and peak searching, because it's really not necessary in this case. So I will just right click, search match, edit the restriction set. If you click this little button here, it cycles all the elements through the colors. So I will change them all to none of, and just choose silicon as the only possible element. And that brings us down to 155 patterns to search through. So I'll close and search. Be very quick. And I'll click on the first uh, candidate and we see that the peaks, the bluish grayish lines match up nicely with our diffraction data. Even the relative intensities are pretty close. So I will left click and drag up and then the next step is to right click and convert pattern to phase. And you'll see when I do that I get a 100% here. Now it's 100% because we only have one phase so by default it has to be 100%. But if you do not see this number here, if you only see silicon, then that means that this file does not have the required structural information in order to perform this analysis. If we double click on the file and scroll down, we see structure. So it gives us the position of the silicon atoms. If in your case, for whatever phase you're looking at, you don't see the number there, you would just want to left click, drag this back down, and find a pattern or a file that does have that structural information. But we know this first one does, so we'll just accept that again. Now we can move on to refinement control. This is where we can see different parameters of our refilled refinement. So global variables, we have the specimen displacement, we have some background variables. Under our phase, we have things like the scale factor, we can look at the unit cell, the profile variables, and all of these we can click to refine if we like in a manual uh, refinement. But that's all beyond the scope of this video, we're going to be uh, just keeping it much more simple. So the first thing we want to do is go to global variables. I suggest changing the tolerance, we'll add two zeros in there. Sometimes if you have a very complicated pattern, this can be a bad thing to do, but with a simple pattern, it seems to improve the refinement. We'll also tell the computer to calculate errors. Moving on to our phase, we have the option, if we scroll down, to set an asymmetry function. So in case your peaks are a little as uh, asymmetric, if you set a function, it'll help shape them a little bit better. So we can do split width and shape, that's what I like to do. And then even though we are doing a uh, size strain analysis, 
For this step, we want to make sure that this says none. All we do then is that we make sure that we are in automatic mode, and then we can go to this uh, parameter set and choose size strain analysis R. It's the phase fit. We'll click that. Right click down here to show the difference plot. And we see the refinement steps that it's going through and how it's changing these R values, which are goodness of fit values essentially. So we see that it modified some of the background terms, the lattice parameters, the uh, profile variables. And as we watch, this difference profile gets better and better, and this RWP continues to improve. So we'll just let it do its thing. It's almost done. And there's our fit. So if we zoom in on some of these peaks, we see that the blue calculated curve matches up very nicely with that red curve. That's what we want. This first peak is a little extra off. It's not the best fit, but that's not surprising for these low angle peaks. So once we determine that we have a good fit, all we do is right click on the phase and then take as size strain standard. So the peak widths are now saved in, the, uh, in this file and we can empty out this file, delete everything inside of it, and then kind of make a, uh, a blank file that we can then import future data into. So let's go ahead, we'll just right click, initialize global variables. That changes all the background back to zero and all the different parameters back to zero. We don't need the silicon phase anymore, so we can delete that phase. We'll go to the scan list and delete the scan that we imported earlier remove scan. So now that goes away. We no longer need to deal with silicon so we can delete this. And we shouldn't have any peaks and we don't. So now we can go file, save as. We want to make sure it's a high score plus file. And I will just save this as something like the P F for parameter file. I will leave in all the information about the optics I used because if any of these change for future measurements, we'll have to do the same process again. So we'll save. And now we can import our first data file. So we'll just choose the regular AL203. And then file, save as, and we'll just use the same name that the XRDML file had. So now we're dealing with AL203, so we will right click, search match. If you have a more complicated pattern, you can first determine background and search peaks if you like, but I already know this is AL203. So I'll edit the restriction set. Turn that back, we'll do O and AL. So that gives us 354 patterns. If we make it so that they both have to be in every search pattern, that brings it down to 199. Search. Now you see that little window disappeared without me clicking OK. That happens sometimes, at least on my version. If that does happen, you can't really accept candidates. It greatly limits your functionality. So all you have to do is shrink the program, bring it back up, and then say OK. So we see aluminum oxide has a very high score. If we click it, the lines all match up beautifully. So we'll left click and drag it up to accept. We'll right click, uh, convert pattern to phase. We have the numbers, so we know that this is a good file to use. Under refinement control, global variables, they should still be set nicely. They are. Under corundum, we want to uh, choose the same asymmetry function that we used with the silicon standard. And that is very important. You want to make sure that this matches whatever standard you used. If you chose not to have any asymmetry for your standard, you would choose no asymmetry. But I chose split width and shape, so that's what we'll go with. 
and this time you do want to perform a size and strain analysis. So with that, we'll go up here, and we will just use that same phase fit size strain analysis R. Again, I will go back to the difference plot, and we will let it do its thing as it refines each of these parameters in sequence. We see that the values continue to get better. This peak in particular, there's a little bit of a mismatch. It's not the best fit, but it's not terrible. So if we click on Corundum, left click, and scroll all the way to the bottom, we see this derived data. Click the plus sign, and here we have the microstrain, the error on the microstrain, crystallite size, and then the error. So we see that we have about 0.08% microstrain and about 830 angstroms for the crystallite size. And that's pretty much it when it comes to size strain analysis. Um, I will go ahead and analyze the annealed sample just so that we can see what kind of differences we get. So file, open. I'll open up that parameter file. We will insert the data file, this time the annealed option. File, save as, it already puts in the correct name, so we'll save that. Now I could go through the search match process again, or I could just go to my old file, the pattern list, right click, copy to that annealed file. I'm pretty sure this is only available on newer versions of High Score Plus, so if yours doesn't have it, you might need to upgrade if you want that function. You can even go to your refinement control, right click on the phase itself, and copy that to the new document. I like to just go ahead and start with a clean slate though. So I will right click, convert a pattern to a phase, refinement, we still need to go back to the corundum, make sure that we have the asymmetry function set, tell it to analyze size and strain, and it's just a simple matter of choosing that size strain analysis R. So you see we start out 20,000 as our uh, difference profile, but it quickly gets much better. See here, refinement iterations exceeded, so it wasn't able to go through the refinement long enough to really reach a minimum value. So if we wanted, we could just go through and do another uh, iteration of that. Just to let it get to the best possible value. Now we do see that this peak is a little bit more off this time. I don't know if this is a little bit of preferred orientation or maybe some of these other variables need to be refined upon. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much in this case. Most everything is uh, really well fit. So if we go to Corundum, scroll down, look at our values. We see, I believe before we had about 630 angstroms as our crystallite size. Now it's about 1330. We had 0.08 percent microstrain. Now that microstrain is almost gone. So these are the effects that we would expect to see with uh, annealing a sample. So that's pretty much it for this video. As a reminder, if you would like to learn more about using High Score Plus, links to my other tutorials can be found in the description below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments section. Thank you and have a great day.